welcome to another edition of One True Champion. Kristen Keith alongside the insider himself, Wendell Barnhouse. When it comes to football, I'm not sure if there was a more exciting conference to watch this past weekend than the Big 12. There were several close games that came down to the wire. The biggest one was our top 10 matchup between TCU and Baylor. Neither team had trailed the entire season, and it was Baylor who rallied from a 21-point deficit to get the win 61-58 in the final seconds of the ball game. Baylor came into this close matchup fourth in the nation in total defense, and TCU came in seventh. So Wendell, how in the heck were so many points scored in this ballgame? I'm not really sure, even though I watched the game. Now, TCU had 485 yards total offense. They returned a kickoff and an interception for touchdowns, and they still lost. Now, it was figured to be a 2% probability for Baylor to be able to come back and win when they fell behind by 21 with about 11 minutes to play. Bryce Petty, though, followed up his pick six with some brilliant football. Baylor averaged 16 yards per play on its three touchdown drives that took just seven minutes of clock time to get the game tied up. That brings us to our stat of the week. The 119 points scored between TCU and Baylor is the most ever in an AP Top 10 game. The previous record was 105 in the Nebraska-Oklahoma State game of 88. I was actually alive for that one. And so was I, and I think I was graduating college. But anyway, this is the 19th season of football competition of the Big 12, Kristen, and I think you could make an argument that this game might have been the most exciting and entertaining in Big 12 history. Now, if it's not number one, it sure as heck is in the top five. Now, critics might say that this game didn't have any defense or the defense was bad, but I think it was just that the offensive talent on the field was kind of in the Seinfeld category of being real and spectacular. Well, what I found real and spectacular was Baylor's defensive coordinator Phil Bennett doing the shmoney dance after their win. Another exciting Big 12 game from the weekend was OU Texas. The Sooners got the win 31 to 26, but looking at the numbers, this ball game sure did seem backwards, Wendell. Yep. Now, Texas managed to stop Oklahoma's touted run game, and if you break down the numbers, Texas had over twice the amount of total yardage that OU did. Now, minus the penalties, this was the most impressed that I've been by Texas this season. I think they really could have won that ball game, but what kept them from doing that, Wendell? Well, you know, I think last week Charlie Strong made the point that his team was still learning how to win. Well, Class is still in session. Texas had its best offensive showing of the season, as you mentioned, and its defense was again dominant, particularly in the first half. But UT had 11 penalties for 85 yards, including a holding penalty that wiped out a Tyrone Swoops 73-yard run. Now, Swoops made just one mistake, but that resulted in a pick six. And after taking a 3-0 lead, the special teams for Texas failed as Alex Ross gave OU the lead for good with a 91-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Texas is showing improvement, and I think that's all you can really ask from a first-year head coach. Moving along, another game that came down to the wire and had a very similar ending to the TCU-Baylor game was West Virginia-Texas Tech. West Virginia trailed for three quarters of the game, but pulled out a 55-yard field goal to win by three in the last few seconds of the game, marking Josh Lambert's second game-winning kick of the season. Tech, on the other hand, looks like they're getting better, but the Red Raiders are still struggling with penalties. What was the difference maker in this ballgame, Wendell? Well, penalties, mistakes. West Virginia tied the game with a 78-yard touchdown drive that was helped along by 30 yards in penalties by Texas Tech. Now, the Red Raiders got out to 14-3 and 21-10 leads at home. Looked like they were going to take control, but they couldn't, and they made too many mistakes in the second half. The most penalized team in the nation got flagged 12 times for 115 yards. Now, Texas Tech does have some pr promising talent like freshman receiver Devin Lauderdale, who scored the first two touchdowns of his career. Now, he's got size and speed, and maybe the next game they'll figure out how to spell his name right on his jersey. But, you know, the two teams that won on last play field goals, they're going to hook up in Morgantown Saturday, West Virginia and Baylor. Here's a look at the complete Big 12 scoreboard for Week 7. With Oklahoma State getting the 27-20 win over Kansas and Iowa State defeating Toledo 37-30. Well, Oklahoma State needed another Tyreek the Freak Hill kickoff return touchdown to get past Kansas, which played its best game of the season, still lost. Now, the Cowboys are 5-1, but their last six foes in the Big 12 are com a combined 25-9. Now, Iowa State got the win that it needed, and the Cyclones' offense appears to be hitting its stride. That rounds out our football talk for the show, but before before we go, let's talk some hopes, Wendell. On Friday night, Kansas held their annual Late Night in the Fog, the official tip-off to basketball season. And I gotta say, I'm loving what men's head coach Bill Self wore to the event. Is it Bill Self or Bill Swag? Now, he's the man all us other men want to be. You know, two years ago, he was at a charity softball game at Kauffman Stadium. Hadn't hit a softball since 1992. He said he hit a home run in his first at bat. And at late night, he's always pulling off something notable. Now, this time, those glasses kind of make him look like Clark Kent to me, but that jacket, just get it back to Andrew Wiggins, care of the Minnesota Timberwolves, send it immediately. 
We'll have more Hoops Talk coming to you later in the week as both Wendell and myself will be in Kansas City this Wednesday for Big 12 Basketball Media Day. That's it for now. For Wendell Barnhouse and Kristen Keith, thanks for watching One True Champion.